Good evening. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. I welcome Larry Kudlow of Kudlow Reports at CNBC, my colleague and co-host. We begin with the phony scandals. Larry had a very important report tonight on his show at CNBC about the IRS scandal. I also want to add information about the Benghazi investigation because these last weeks, Mr. Carney at the White House, his job, has been using the term phony scandal uh, to regard all of these investigations from springtime. The President of the United States also has indicated the word phony. What is phony about the IRS investigation and the Benghazi investigation? Very little to nothing. Larry, a very good evening to you. Your conversation about the IRS tonight is about Lois Lerner. Now, that is a name we know. She took the Fifth Amendment before Congress several, uh, many weeks ago. But this time, Lois Lerner's name is used not with regard to the 501c3, 501c4 nonprofit applications that were delayed pending, but also, but this time to the FEC. FEC, that is the Federal Election Commission. Lois Lerner was tasked by some persons at the FEC for information. Can she give information? information out, Larry. Is that correct? Good no. evening to you. No, it is not correct. She is not permitted to do that across agency lines. By the way, it was for something called the American Future Fund. And no, the IRS had not even posted its own case. In other words, they were still investigating a case, and she gave part of that investigatory information to the um, FEC, the Federal Election Commission. She can't do that. That is a criminal offense. And now uh, that probably explains why she wound up taking right, the Fifth right. Amendment. But this is going to this is going to grow because I don't know what kind of support she has inside the FEC. But this is going to grow. There's, there's, she there's came from growth. the FEC before she joined the IRS. She'd been many years at the FEC. Don McGahn. The Republican FEC commissioner is the man who's brought this to our attention because, uh, as I understand it, the FEC cannot request or cannot start an investigation unless it all votes together to investigate someone. And there's some funny business at the FEC, too. The reason I was struck by this, Larry, is because the IRS investigation is very difficult to see. It's, it's underwater. We, we can't know where, what's going on down there at the bottom of the lake. But from what I heard tonight, Night, there is an ongoing criminal investigation somewhere. Is that correct? Well, right. I, I just want to be clear. The, the FEC, which polices uh, their, you know, wrongdoing among campaign finance right, laws, right. is not exempted from something called Rule 6103. And all that means, that prohibits the IRS from sharing confidential taxpayer information. So in other words, you cannot share confidential taxpayer information with the Federal Election Commission. You can't do that. The email that passed back and forth is that Lois Lerner may have provided that information nonetheless. And the email quotes and says, when we spoke last July, you told us that the American Future Fund had not received an exemption letter from the IRS. This is some FEC attorney is writing. So they have established that she shuttled information over right. there. That is illegal. That is illegal, and in fact, that is a criminal. Now, criminal was a term that was used early on uh, in May when the investigation opened in IRS. And what I heard on your show tonight is that there's information in a recent D uh, FBI request for an extension on their investigation that mentions that there's an ongoing criminal investigation because it's criminal to share information from the IRS, a $250,000 fine up to five years in jail. So we know something. There's some team out there that's looking into criminal misconduct, and Lois Lerner is my suspect, Larry. Well, I, I didn't... This, by the way, was uh, information from the distinguished lawyer, Jay Sekulow, and I did not know that, uh, that the FBI was, in fact, pursuing a criminal investigation. Now that we know that, a lot of things begin to come together. Right. I just want to tell you, though, I still do not believe that Lois Lerner was the ultimate quarterback of this operation. I think other names 
are going to surface, and I may be wrong. But one name that definitely is out there is this uh, William Wilkins character, who was the um, general counsel of the IRS, and that is one of two political appointees inside the agency. It is an ext- very senior spot, very senior spot. And if Lois Lerner and her friends were sending stuff to the general counsel's office, I don't care if Wilkins was there at the moment it came in or what meeting he went to. He would have seen it, he would have read it, and he would have known about it. And that's why I think he's going to be the next guy. They're going to bring him in front of the committee, and they're going to depose him uh, under oath. Josh Dropnik, a spokesperson for Democrats on the House Ways and Means Committee, quotes is quoted in responding to the revelations about the FEC and Lois Lerner. House Republicans are doing everything they can, can to distract attention from their inability to focus on jobs and the economy. That is the Democratic response. Republicans are throwing mud against the wall with the hope that something will stick. Moving well, on to another investigation. When you're, talking about, when you're talking about the FBI... Right. Pursuing a criminal. It's not House Republicans. No. Then that means what the Democrats are saying is just about the stupidest darn thing I've ever heard. Okay, because they're now bucking up against the FBI in a criminal investigation, not a routine investigation, a criminal investigation. So I don't know what the Democrats are talking about. Benghazi, September 11th, 2012. We're coming up to a one year after. There's a very strong indication that al-Qaeda is on the offensive right now. Threats to our embassies. I spoke with Larry on air September 13th, two days after the attack. And that night, my information was that the attack was, let's do the short version here. The, al- the attack was al-Qaeda inspired. Ansar al-Sharia, there are many names for these organizations. Launched on the ambassador's residence, which was was not an embassy or legation. It's where the ambassador was, Ambassador Stevens, and then on the CIA annex. The questions raised within this last week in a CNN report point to the fact that the CNN annex was there to recruit, train, fund, arm, and ship uh, fighters to Syria, to Turkey. That's what was going on. That's the suspicion that it was gun running. Now, a year later, Larry, these are this is also a scandal that Mr. Carney and Mr. Obama would tell us is phony. Doesn't look phony to me, Larry. It looks like it's once again come back into the news because we're told that the CIA, Mr. Brennan now leads it, is polygraphing officers who were present in Benghazi or have reason to know what happened there, polygraphing them routinely in order to intimidate them. At this point, Larry, it feels like the White House has lost control of these phony scandals. Well, I hope so. I mean, what I gather from CNN and elsewhere is that there are a lot of CIA agents yes, there. Yes, dozens. And you know, at the time, if you go back, turn the clock back to September, um, nobody said that. It's like there were no CIA right. agents there, that there are only a few people there, you know, and that they were the ones protecting the ambassador. It turns out there was a whole flock of them. Now, the question is, why haven't they been interviewed by FBI? All right. What the FBI supposedly went over there. Then they said they couldn't get in. It wasn't safe. But they had supposed to make it safe. Why weren't these CIA agents investigated, questioned, interrogated by the FBI? I don't understand that because that's what Obama himself said was supposed to happen. Now we are learning they were there. Well, where is this interrogation stuff? Phony scandals. Question mark. Larry Kudlow, CNBC's Kudlow Reports and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show.